Hi to all the Heart Journal magazine readers. Uh, my name is Vilna Furstenberg and I will be your instructor for this little video. So I'm going to start off by just prepping my Strathmore mixed media journal with a little bit of gesso and I'm using a credit card just to spread it as thinly as possible. Um, I think that I like to use gesso uh, on my mixed media pages. I know it's a very personal preference, but for me, I love the idea of having just that little bit of a barrier between the media and um, and the paper. So I just showed you on the previous little clip, and then this is the actual page that I'm going to be making, and I actually prepped this one too with um, with gesso. So. I'm starting off with um, a cut file. Well, those of you who don't know, it's a the silhouette is a machine, and I design these little watercolors, and then I print and cut it with the silhouette. And the silhouette um, is a wonderful cutting machine, and it it can cut right around very detailed work, like you can see there. But you can also buy my illustrations and cut it out by hand. So. That's uh, totally up to you. I'm just inherently lazy, so I love using my silhouette. And I'm starting off with a little bit of Mod Podge. Okay, so um, for those of you who have never seen anything that I've done before, I have a YouTube video uh, channel, and I love making art journals. I love, love, love it because of the creative process. So I'll talk about that a little bit later. But... For me, and I also have an art journal workshop on my site, iHeartStudio.ca, where you can, um, where I explore starting points. So, a starting point for me is um, a lovely little technique to just get rid of the whiteness of the page. And um, in the workshop on iHeartStudio, um, it's called Starting Points. It's an art journaling workshop. I have three or four different starting points. And for this specific page, I'm starting with my illustration. So I don't always start with the illustration. That was just my starting point for this page. And uh, I used Mod Podge just to adhere it to my page. And now it's completely dry. And now I'm going to paint with watercolors. So... My art journals are typically uh, three or four layers. And um, it's very interesting to see how watercolor react uh, when you paint on top of gesso, where it's a total different look when you paint um, on um, watercolor paper, you know. But I'm not too concerned about the way that the watercolor is reacting on the gesso. Because I am going to add more layers later on. And this is just the first layer. I'm using the Kuritaki watercolors, which I absolutely love. I bought the set from Amazon. And I'm in love with um, the vivid colors. And the very interesting colors um, of the set. It's not always... Um, it, you don't usually find like a beautiful mint green like you can see there you know on on watercolor sets or in watercolor sets sorry if I isn't or in the wrong place um English not my first language <laughs> so just forgive me for that because in this on um, with this specific set uh the colors look totally different on the palette dry than they do when you add water so I'm just going to add the names because I can't read Chinese or Japanese. So I'm just adding it with a fine point pen to the bottom of the little palette. I'm just writing the names. Okay, so that was just for me to make it a little easier. And now I'm just going to paint a little bit more. So my palette colors for this page is purples and reds. And I just love it. And it was inspired by the little... Um, illustration that you can see there so you know I love doing um, art journaling I absolutely love the process of art journaling because 
um, I have a very firm belief that absolute nothing that you do creatively goes to waste. So even if you make a page in your art journal that you absolutely hate and it doesn't work, it doesn't come together, it's never a waste of time. That creativity goes into your, I call it a creative escrow, and it shows up at some point. And I can testify to this firsthand because I would do something in my art journals like for instance on this page later on I'll show you and I was painting a painting yesterday and I just used the same technique just came out you know and it was just the perfect little thing uh, for that specific part of the painting so the process of art journaling is really to um, it fast forwards your uh, creative endeavors it really is a catalyst for creativity and the more you work in art journals the more it will show up in in everything else that you do creative creatively so my watercolors is dry um i i actually number my pages because I work in four art journals at the same time so I would set aside an art journal day and I have four art journals and I number them one two three four with a little clip that I just add to the top like you can see there number four and the reason for that is because um, they need time to dry right so this one was wet with uh, watercolors so I just placed it down to let it dry and then I picked up number one and started on that one again with the next layer and so it, it provides me with a lot of um, continuity so I'm going to add another layer and this time I'm just going to use gesso and I will be using my palette knife and this little Tim Holtz stencil and I'm just going to spread the gesso through the stencil like you would do with uh, molding paste so you can use molding paste but I just wanted to use gesso uh, just to see what it's doing because I've never used it before really and uh, it worked beautifully you can see how lovely it looks I'm just using a little part of the stencil so not the whole thing and I'm just picking a little part here and there and um, I love 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 the effect that that this little stencil gives. I love the, because it's not quite uh, a flower or it's more like a texture for me. Um, I would also, when I work in four journals at once, I would have the th same theme going through the whole thing, you know, with, um, with all four journals so I would use the same illustrations um, not the exact same one but usually I have a little collection so I would use different ones uh, but of the same collection I would use the same techniques so for instance uh, watercolors with a stencil with gesso and then acrylic paint and ink so that's just a little flow that I've developed and it really works well for me personally I also have three girls so one day I'm hoping that I could leave each of them an art journal, you know, with some meaningful words that they can, um, all three, three or four art journals. Um, because I think I will be art journaling for a very long time. I absolutely love uh, Liquitex Heavy Body Acrylic Paint. And that's what I'm using here to paint with. And I'm using uh, the Deep Violet, it's the color. And a small paintbrush, you know, and I'm basically just uh, making markings with my paintbrush. You know, I, for the longest time, I felt that my art journals have to be put together really nicely. I felt that they had to look really pretty. And then I gave myself permission um, the last couple of months to just express myself um, in my art journals and I know it sounds weird but sometimes we have to give ourselves just permission we have so many rules that we set for ourselves and um, and sometimes I felt I feel very liberated yeah, in my everyday life um, to just sometimes give myself permission to do something and to say something to speak my truth and in art journaling you know to 
make something, uh, paint something raw and maybe not so pretty, you know. Um, but that's a process and that's why I love this this thing called art journaling so much is because of the creative process. I painted there with a little bit of uh, liquid acrylic ink, which I also love. And um, I'm just using a wet wipe just to wipe away what I felt was a little bit excessive. And, um, and yeah, I, you know, there's so much um, that we can say about art journaling. And I'm sure that every single artist have a different approach and a different view to it but for me um, I, I try to remember that it's an exercise in creativity um, when when I get into art journaling I usually put on some rock music I was listening to um, One Republic when I was painting these ones and I put it really loud and my children know that girls know that <laughs> they say that mom is arting and um and, and really, it's just such a freeing thing. It's a meditation to me. It, it, it calms my heart. It calms my soul. Um, this creative process is really um, like therapy to me. And uh, I can't say enough good words, you know, about the, this creative process um, in art journaling. It's by far. You know, when I was studying art um, back in the 90s, uh, one of the things that we had to do in our first year was we had to keep a sketchbook. And you had to draw from real life a sketch every single day. Uh, it can be a small sketchbook, and it usually was the smallest one we could find. Oh, my number came away there, so I'm just going to stick it down again with a little bit of hot glue. But anyway, so we, we would uh, find the smallest sketchbooks um, you know, we can buy in the art shop. And so even if you just draw, you know, a pair of glasses or your hand or, um, you know, um, a glass or a jar or a flower or something, you know, it had to be just from real life. So you're not, you, you were not allowed to draw from a photograph or from anything else. And, uh, that really taught us drawing in a way, you know, um, it, it was one of those things that taught you to see. But, you know, for with art journaling, I think that um, doing art journals um, has the same idea. It, it really teaches you uh, creative freedom. It teaches you, uh, you know, it makes you explore different techniques. Um, it, you allow yourself to just be curious and to approach um, things differently. And one thing that I love about the um, the starting points uh, workshop that I did was that how each starting point doesn't matter how you start, um, it it sort of dictates the page. It it it's a roadmap that you're starting out on to tell you where this page is going to go. You know, and um, and I think that's why I love the idea of starting points so much. And just to start with something. Sometimes it's, uh, you know, with the background. Sometimes it's with uh, collage. Sometimes with illustrations like I did here. And the illustration dictates where the page goes. Another thing that I just want to mention is that I love writing on my art journals. And maybe I'm taking it a little too literally, but... I'm painting here just with um, black acrylic ink, so it's uh, Liquitex ink, and my favorite brush, and I have no idea where I got this brush from, but it's my favorite brush. But, but back to the journaling part, for me, it's art journaling, and yeah, I'm taking it a little, a little bit literally, but a journal page is not finished unless I journal on it. That's just for me, personally. And I'm a scrapbooker, um, first and foremost. And I love um, adding that those meaningful words to my pages. And I think the same just came through with the art journaling. Because one day I realized I love art. And I love to journal. And I have 
many moleskin journals to prove that I love to journal. And why not put the two together and make art journals? So you would see in my final page that um, I did journal on the page. And that's why I love white space on a page because I always want space to write, you know. And sometimes it, it can be that you uh, write with a white pen. So it doesn't always have to be a black pen, you know. It's sometimes a white pen is fine. Um, and then you can do the negative, you know, with white on black. But I love to write on my journals, and I usually use the vellum, um, the Zik uh, writer for vellum, and uh, I love the fine point. And that, or any any permanent marker that has a little bit of a tip, a felt tip, that can move over media. So thank you so much for watching. I'm just putting the final touches on the page. Just going to paint a little bit more. You can find um, me on my YouTube channel. Um, just Google on YouTube or just search on YouTube for Vilna. F for Furstenberg. And you'll find my channel. And I have a couple of, not too many, but I have a couple of original pages on there. Um, other creative things and then at the very end of this video I'm just going to show you a little preview of um, the products that I designed that I used here and I call it the Extremely Thankful Collection and you can find it on iHotStudio.ca um, I think it's mini class 3 and with this collection you can also get some bonus scrapbooking videos so thank you again and uh, I hope to see you on the internet. Bye-bye.